Mr. Clerk. Mr. President, I have a priority motion. Senator Wayne would move to bracket the bill until May 1st of 2020. Senator Wayne, recognize open your bracket motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I am next in the queue, but unfortunately, I have to go back to court uh, for a client and then come back down here. But I came down here this morning because I've been dealing with education since 2008 and probably prior to that when I was working with kids, and that's when I ran for the learning community. Since then, I've been dealing with it in an ele ele elected official capacity. And so I want to frame this conversation differently, and I hope truly on both sides of the fence, whether you consider yourself an ally or not, listen to these words I'm saying, because I'm coming from a different perspective, a different perspective where I was against this bill for many years. But there's some fundamental things that have changed over the last course of the year that made me say, well, why not? First, every child should have access to a high quality education, not by chance, not by privilege, but by right. The fact of the matter is it's right now a chance that you get to go to a good school depending upon where you live. Sometimes it's often a privilege that you get to go to a good school in Nebraska, but the fact of the matter is it should be by right. Over a century ago, Frederick Douglass, and then later quoted by Malcolm X, said that education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. Well, when you look at the achievement gap in the communities in East Omaha, we're not doing a very good job of preparing black people for tomorrow's world. And in fact, over the last 12 years, that gap has grown. And there could be never more truth to the statement that I just read when today you think about how our kids are competing, not just in Nebraska, but globally with China, with Russia, with Italy, a good education is the key to the American promise. And what that means is that if you work hard and you get a good education, you can be successful in America. But a key element of that is a good education. And we are failing so many people. I am a proud Omaha Public School product. I went to Hartman Elementary, King Science Center, Northwest High School, and what I learned in that environment is I was blessed to have mentors and people who took me aside to make sure I was successful. Elmer Crumley, Arvin Frazier, Judge Lowe. They stood with me to get me through. But I also learned that we have a dual education system and that many kids are often left behind. And the fact of the matter is today, many of the kids that I represent are still getting Jim Crow math and Bath of the Bus science. And that is a fundamental problem for me. We talk about many of the people who will speak up against this bill. I have seen quotes on Martin Luther King that says, a right delayed is a right denied. Well, damn it, this is a right being delayed every year for my community. So don't quote that when it's convenient. Be an ally when it's not. We shouldn't criticize parents for wanting something better than their school they're stuck in. We shouldn't criticize communities saying, I want a choice. But let me tell you about the choice in my school, school district. If I opt out to another school, and I have a bill on it, what, LB 555, 550. If I opt out to Millard, and I want to leave Millard because as I've been there for six years or my child's been there for six years, the only school district I get to go back is my home school in my neighborhood. That is statute. There's no real choice, there's one choice. You get to opt out once and if that doesn't work out, you gotta go back to your neighborhood school district. That is law. I've tried to up that for the last two years to unlimited or to five. And then I get the other side of the argument. Well, now we're given too much choice. Parents don't know. We can't have a kid leave a school district every year. Well, if a kid is transferring every year, there's a bigger problem that needs to be addressed in that family household. So we have this false sense of choice. It's only one choice. And then if you don't like that choice, you gotta go back to the same school district you were trying to leave. While public school system continues to operate in a way that neglects and outright harms the education of black children, What's amazing is we are the same people who are standing up to block the choice that parents want. Just a choice. 
I believe that it's unfair, unjust, and just flat out wrong to not give parents a choice. So let me tell you about a choice that happened at Burke High School last year. When they decided to not have fall football because of COVID, over 30% of the football varsity players left, picked up, and moved to Bennington, Westside, or Millard so they can get into their school districts so those kids can play a sport. You know what happened at North High School? They stayed. Many kids lost scholarships. You know what happened at North Northwest? They stayed. Many kids lost opportunities for scholarships. Choice is about privilege having the dollars to make that choice. This bill is disrupting the system enough to say, let's give free and low income students and their parents a choice to go to a different school. Why is that bad? I have no idea. I've said before over and over, we have to be comfortable being uncomfortable, and this is one of those moments. There are very few people on this floor who I think have the ability to stand up in good conscience and say they are against all tax credits. Very few. And I will credit Megan Hunt, Senator Hunt. She's been one of those people. 1107, Senator Kavanaugh, Senator Hunt, we're, we're against it all the way through. Outside of that, if we spend a hundred and something million dollars on corporations we, and we can't spend five million dollars on people, then we're saying we're putting profits over people as a body. Because this bill is about the kids. All the other tax credits that I've seen have been about the profits. So when we sit here and have this debate, and I'll be listening to it while I'm in court too, because it shouldn't take that long as I'm driving back. This is that divining moment where I'm going to start calling out people for not being consistent when it comes to choices that my parents are asking for, at least the option. And you know what? They may not. They may not like a private school. They may agree that it might have too much of Christianity or too much of this and go back to public school. But what I do know is in Senator Terrell McKinney's district, there's a school by Nelson Mandela that filled up and had a waiting list before it even opened. So I know parents are asking for something. They're asking for something because what we're doing right now is not working. And I'm not saying this is the silver lining, this is the magic bullet that's gonna fundamentally change the education in North and South Omaha, or is gonna change the education in rural Nebraska. But what we're doing is not working. We are not making the changes that need to happen to make sure kids are being educated. And if it's about dollars, because I sat on a conference call when OPS said they don't need any more money. They have more money than they know what to do with this year. So if it's about dollars, then in the next two years, I, the achievement gap should be gone because they have more money now than they know what to do with. It's not about that. Suspending 800 kindergartners has nothing to do with dollars. That is a culture. That's why over four years, I have not, nah, I don't know, we keep going back and forth, not sure. But at the end of the day, we've passed multiple hundreds of millions of tax credits for corporations. But when it comes to scholarships that mainly benefit kids that look like me, we're going to oppose it. And then you're going to stand here and say you're an ally when it comes to police brutality. That's the same system, it's the same government over the history. There's been two systematic governments that our people have relied on that has pushed us back, police and education system. So you can't have talk about one and not talk about the other. I literally when drove it, home last night, drove back down here because I have to leave by 10 o'clock because we have to change how this conversation goes in this body. We need to stop using excuses as we are taking money away from education, but we are okay with taking money away for education for profits. We have to stop saying that everything's fine, let's just wait a little bit longer. I've been elected for a whole generation who walked from kindergarten through 12th grade and nothing's changed. And we wanna wait longer? It's time to start upsetting the apple cart to create change. And although this is a very, very small, small pebble being thrown in this big stone, it's a start. 
And it's a start to empower the parents and the kids in my community to make that choice, a real choice. That's why I came down here. And that's why I'm gonna put another 200 miles on my car today, Same driving way. back and forth. You've exhausted your 10 minutes, but you're next in the queue. Thank you. So I wanna just end briefly with something real simple. We talk a lot about the American dream, but we know when kids don't have the right education, they go into the American prison system. We know study after study shows that prison systems are often built off of third and fourth grade reading scores. That's fact. That's how they project what's going to happen, at least they did for the last 80 years. So rather than trying to keep parents and students in bad schools, let's do a dual approach. Let's fix the system, but let's also give people choice. With so many schools not living up to the, what I consider the end of our bargain for the American dream, we have obviously more work to do. Nobody's denying that. But let's not get into these, I almost cussed on the mic, BS arguments about tax credits taken away from education funding. When I heard nobody say that for two years about corporate tax credits. Let's not talk about rich people being able to have a tax write-off, because that's not my concern. My concern are the poor kids being able to go to school. Let's have that conversation. But don't stand up and say it's about this, this, and this when we haven't been consistent on anything else. Don't say, stand up and say you're an ally for the cause, but you won't even give the people in my community an option a $5 million option when we spend hundreds of millions of dollars every year in property tax relief and tax credits. So I'll, I'll be watching, but I hope we have a better, like I appreciate Senator Hunt's amendment. It's working towards to make the bill better. I just don't want this to deteriorate into what I've seen before on this floor with false information and denial of a right that's been denied too long for too long in my community. Thank you, Mr. President, and I withdraw that motion. Motion's withdrawn. Thanks, Senator Wayne.